Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 7, Infectious Disease. This is video number 9 and we're going to be just having a bit of a look at host parasite adaptations. In this particular video we're going to be trying to compare some of the adaptations of different pathogens that facilitate their entry into and transmission between hosts. So we're going to have a little bit of a look at some videos down the track where we look more at the host responses. So in this case we want to um, firstly recall that definition of adaptation. We want to discuss some of the adaptations of different pathogens which help them move from one host to another and then maybe uh, expand that out to a range of adaptations which can characterise the pathogen-host relationship, especially in the context of transmission and infection. Now we will have a little bit of a look at the immune response and how our bodies deal with the invasion of pathogens, but we also need to have a look at the pathogens themselves. What are the key components for a pathogen to be successful? Well, the most important thing, of course, is it's got to be able to enter the host. So it's, it's got to, I guess, reach a host um, and then find the location that it needs uh, on or within that host. Once it's there, it needs to multiply. It needs to increase in numbers. Now that can happen uh, on the body of the host. It may happen within the host cells or tissues. Um, sometimes uh, pathogens may actually be able to find places within the uh, immune response system that actually helps to protect them, allows them to hide um, from the host in order to uh, carry out this multiplication process. Now, in the, in the process of trying to do this, there are a couple of ways that the pathogen may be able to, um, I guess, uh, increase its numbers um, whilst or during attack from the host. So if there's ways for the pathogen to resist the defence mechanisms, to overcome those defence mechanisms, and of course that could actually just relate back to the uh, reproductive rate, or, um, as I said before, perhaps uh, by hiding within the um, host's defence cells, then it may not trigger the host's defence mechanisms at all. And these are ways of trying um, to survive long enough within the host to enable uh, multiplication to occur. Generally speaking, um, the pathogen is going to cause some degree of damage to the host. And this is because, uh, if for no other reason, uh, the competition for resources. So even if there's just a competition for what sort of food sources, for water or any other resources that um, the host may have, of course, if what the pathogen specifically needs is uh, materials or cells within the host body, then that damage is going to increase. And if it does that very quickly, then the damage can uh, be so great that it could actually kill the host. So we need to just recall some of the different methods of transmission. In this case, what we want to do as we go through our list is we want to try and identify some of the ways that uh, different pathogens have been able to solve this problem of moving from host to host. So the problem that each is trying to solve is to move from host one to host two. And we've looked at a few different ways that they can do that. Some of them can remain in water droplets. Um, you've probably seen these sort of uh, photos of coughs or sneezes in the past. A huge amount and that's one of the reasons why during the COVID times we've been all asked to mask up. This is a this is a nice graphic example of just how much material can be spread through sneezing and coughing. And of course different pathogens can actually be present in those water droplets and therefore that's an easy way for them to be transmitted uh, either through the air from host to host or onto surfaces to be then picked up by other hosts. Sometimes there may be some impermeable spores in the water that the water doesn't break down so that the pathogen can actually survive for periods of time while it's, it's migrating from one host to another. Um, contaminated water is certainly um, one way in which certain types of um, pathogens, including some quite important historic things like cholera, um, were found in contaminated water. Um, food is another area. Salmonella is probably one good example of um, a bacteria that's present in food, particularly undercooked food, and that 
can transmit from one individual to another. Uh, body fluids, um, blood, blood transfusions, semen um, during sexual intercourse, this, these sorts of things can be means in which uh, pathogens can move from one host to another and also via vectors. So not even directly from one host to another, but via a vector or an intermediate, which then moves them from one host to another. And we see all sorts of different adaptations of different pathogens to um, surviving in a range of different types of environments to allow them to be transmitted from one host to another. But can we identify anything that's a specific advantage? That is, are there features or functions that we see in different individual pathogens or groups of pathogens that actually give them an advantage in the whole transmission process, in the whole motion um, of um, moving from one host to another? Well, one of the things that we can see is the presence of a pathogen may actually induce a change uh, in the host. And you are probably familiar, if not um, directly, at least with the image of rabid dogs. So um, rabies is caused by a virus. One of the things that happens as a consequence of the presence of this virus is an increase in the production of saliva, uh, which is why you, oh, you often associate um, rabies in dogs with um, a lots of saliva foam around the mouth uh, and slight, slightly more aggressive temperament. And of course, if you think about the reason for both of these, the aggressive temperament, the excess saliva, this is the way in which the pathogen can actually move from one host to another. And um, especially if the dog is so aggressive that it bites another individual, then um, that transmission uh, uh, of the pathogen could be a way in which that happens. Now I should say that there's um, some recent research into um, rabies and the effect of rabies on hosts. Um, that's actually changing our uh, ideas about some of the ways in which this occurs. And of course, that's one of the fun things about science is that uh, people are doing research on these things all the time. So you might wanna go and check that one out. Certain types of um, pathogens have very high mutation rates and I guess, um, one of the best examples of that is the flu virus. We know that um, you can get influenza one year, you can actually get the injection for it or the vaccine for it, and then it comes back again the next year and it comes back again the next year. It seems to have very high mutation rates, and each year we seem to have a slightly different strain to the one that we had previously. Um, these are the two, Salmonella and Cryptosporidium are also ones to have a little bit of a look at. Salmonella is one that seems to have been able to adapt or change as an individual, perhaps through mutation, to survive better at its host's body temperature. So um, around that 37 degree mark uh, is optimum and is, enables it to be able to carry out reproduction at a high rate, which is again one of those that multiplication steps very important for the survival um, and transmission of the pathogen. Uh, cryptosporidium um, is one that you um, may probably not necessarily you, but your parents will remember um, that uh, in the Sydney water system there was actually quite a high incidence of um, or higher levels than normal of Giardia and Cryptosporidium um, some years ago. And, um, and we know this particular one, Cryptosporidium, does seem to be zoonotic. That is, it can move from one animal species uh, into a com completely different species. Um, and that's a, an interesting way in which different types of pathogens adapt to be able to survive in completely different hosts, not, not hosts related to their original hosts, but even hosts of different species. So there's a number of different adaptations that um, pathogens use in order to solve the problem of getting a, a surviving in hosts and then B, getting from one host to another. Thanks for watching.